and today we're talking about polynomials. And the first thing we're going to do is sketch a graph. And basically, the information we have makes it harder to sketch a graph because we don't have as much information as we will at the end of the chapter. But we're going to start with some beginning stuff to help us get a very, very general idea of what a graph looks like. So if you're wondering what a polynomial function looks like, okay, I hate to say this looks pretty confusing, right? Basically, in plain English, all the A's are numbers, right? And then do you see how it says x to the n? And then the next one is x to the n minus 1. So the standard form is basically you're going to have, <coughs> excuse me, descending order of exponents. So if you have x to the fourth, let's say you have a 2 there, you might have something like 3x to the third plus 2x squared plus 10x plus 3. So the general idea is you're going to have descending order of exponents as much as possible. Sometimes it's different if you also have a y in there. And then at the end you'll have your, um, your constant, the number that doesn't have a variable at all. And you'll have either f of x or y out in the front. So this could be f of x. And then the coefficient, so there's something really important though. So the leading term here has some important things. So they call this the leading coefficient. So whichever x has the highest exponent is going to be the degree of the whole function. So the degree of this one would be n. Well, in this example, the degree would be 4. But if we're talking about the very generic sense, the degree would be n. And the leading coefficient would be a sub n. So it's just saying that's the number that would go along with the degree. So if we're talking about this little example that I wrote in, the leading coefficient would be 2, and then the degree would be 4. Okay, now here's just some general terms, just so you're familiar with some word wording here. So if the degree is 0, then that would mean you have something like f of x equals 5. And there's no x there at all, right? Because it's x to the 0, which you don't see because it's just a 1. So that would just be a constant number. If you have something like f of x equals 2x plus 3, maybe something like that, then that's a linear equation. And you're, you've used those all the time. So you don't have any exponent. Well, it's a 1. You just don't see it. Then a quadratic equation. We just barely finished talking about those. You'll see your leading coefficient is 2. You have some other other variables and terms there. And then a cubic is what it's called when you have the highest degree of 3. And then a quartic is what it's called when you have the highest degree of 4. So just some general terms there. And it turns out that there's something called the n behavior. So you know how I said that it's kind of hard to sketch a polynomial graph, but there's some key things that will help us get a general idea of what it looks like without having to plot all the points. It gives it as a general idea of how the function behaves. And there's something called n behavior. And it's basically focusing on, so let's look at this really quick, what happens at the end of the polynomial graph. So you're always going to have something like something like this, or maybe it starts off, and it's going to go either into infinity as a positive or down into negative infinity. So over here, if that were the graph, it's going up into infinity on the left. It's going down into infinity on the right. And then if you have, you might have something like, if you have a really high order polynomial, you might have something looking kind of curvy like that. And we can immediately tell though if it's going to go up or down at the beginning or up and down at the end. That's all that's telling us right now. And that depends on the degree and the leading coefficient. So those two things I started to point out in the beginning. So let's put the wording in here. It says the end behavior of a polynomial function depends on the degree and the sign of the leading coefficient. So degree, think the exponent, largest exponent, exactly. And then the sign is either positive or negative. And there's some patterns that will help you remember this. So visually looking at this, so if the degree is odd, 
So if it's one, three, five, any of those, it's going to go up on one side and down on the other side. So you'll notice both of these have an odd degree. And this one goes up on one side, down on the other side. And the way you tell if it's positive or negative, or whether it goes starts going starts down on the left and then up on the right, or up on the left, down on the right, is if it's positive, it ends up going positive at the end, going up. So looking up from left to right, if it's positive, it's going to go up at the end. Looking at it from left to right, if it's negative, it's going to go down at the end. And depending on whether it's odd or even, you know this other side. So if it's odd, it's the opposite of what it does at the end, right? If it's odd, see how it's opposite from where it was at the end? So let's look at this next, these next two patterns. So when the leading coefficient is positive, do you see how it still goes up at the end? However, when it's even, it's going to be the same. So do you see how this time it goes up on the left and up on the right? And over here, it's negative, so we know it goes down at the end. And because it's even, we know that they're the same. So it also goes down at the beginning, like that. And notice that on this diagram, all of the dotted lines in the middle, what that means is that we only know the end behavior based on what we just talked about. We don't have any idea what happens in the middle based on what we just talked about. But there's going to be some other clues that we're going to talk about later in this section. But today, we're basically just practicing recognizing the end behavior. And in order to get that middle section, we're going to plot a few points to give us a general idea what it looks like. But really, the most important thing is what the end behavior is. Okay, so let's look at this example. So looking at this, the only information, so if we're just looking for the end behavior, we're going to look at the coefficient, whether it's even or odd. This one's even. And we're going to look, oh, I'm sorry, not the coefficient. We're going to look at the exponent of the largest, the largest exponent, and it's even. And we're going to look at the coefficient, whether it's positive or negative. And this one's negative. And a lot of times, I'll even just draw little arrows as I'm thinking about this, just to kind of get it in my mind. Okay, so because it's negative, we know it goes down at the end. And because it's even, we know that they are the same. So those two little arrows in my mind, it tells me it starts off going down on the left, and it does some crazy stuff in the middle, and it also goes down at the right. And there's a technical way to say that. I guess I skipped over that before. So one technical way, see this right here? As x goes to negative infinity, so that, that, what that means is as we go left like that through the x-axis, do you see how it's going down? That's why it says f of x equals negative infinity. So as x goes to the left, our output is going down. And then over here, as x goes to the right, our output is going up. And that's why it says positive infinity. And those go into infinity with polynomials. OK, so let's see how to write this technically. So if we're talking about the left side, we're going to say as x goes to negative infinity, right? What is f of x doing? That's our output. Drew the arrow going down, right? So that means it's also going to negative infinity. And then on the right side, this one right here, we would say as x goes to positive infinity, just means as x is going to the right, our output is going to negative infinity. That's how you would technically write that. I have seen some other different types of notation, but this is just one way of writing that. Okay, now we're going to practice graphing. So we're going to get the end behavior first, and then we're going to plot a few points just to kind of estimate the center. So notice that 3 is odd, which means they're different, right? One's going up, one's going down. And then this tells us that it is, because it's negative, it tells us it's going down at the end. So going from left to right, it is going down 
towards the right. So just to kind of get that in my mind, I'm going to say, okay, we know it's going down on the right, and they're different, so it means the one on the left must be going up. And then the way you could technically write that, in fact, I don't think we need to go over the technical writing again, because we're graphing, I'm a visual person. So visually, we know it's going to be going down into infinity on the left, I'm sorry, on the right, and up into infinity on the left. Now, this is a little bit tedious, I hate to say. So in order to get the center, we are going to have more clues later on in the section. But at this point, in order to get the center, we have to s plot a few points. I'm going to leave a little space here to give us room to work out the problem. And to do that, we're essentially plugging points in. And I think I'm going to start with negative 2. You can kind of tell, so if you have a large number, when you start multiplying it by itself, it's going to become very large, and that's when you're getting into that going into infinity section. Because imagine if you had a 10 right here, 10 times 10 is 100, times 10 is 1,000. We're definitely not going to be able to fit 1,000, because it would be negative 1,000 plus 100. So even though that's going to take away from, that's going to make it a little smaller, it's still going to be a very large number that's not going to fit on our graph. So let's start with something small like negative 2. So notice that the negative is after the exponent. So it's negative 2 to the third plus negative 2 squared is 4 plus 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So I'm actually going to change that to minus 6. Is that everything? I think I skipped a... Oh, I missed the minus 3. Move this over just a bit. Okay. So negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. But negative 8 becomes positive 8 because of this negative right here. So we've got 8 plus 4, minus 6, minus 3. 8 plus 4 is 12, minus 6 is 6, minus 3 is 3. So our input is negative 2, output is 3. And let's do, let's do a few scattered points. Let's try 0. 0 is a nice one, because 0 to the third is 0, plus 0, plus 3 times 0 is 0, minus 3. This gives us a nice quick number. 0 and negative 3. And then 2, so we've got 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, so we have negative 8 plus 4 plus 3 times 2 is 6 minus 3. Negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4, negative 4 plus 6 is 2, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Let's see what we have so far. Negative 1, okay, so over 2, down 1. It's a little sketchy, right? I'm trying to decide if we want to plot a few more points or not. We do know, though, that as we get into the larger numbers, it's going to. We know that it's going to be going up from here because those are getting into the larger numbers, and we know that it's going to be going down from here. I think for today's purposes, this is actually enough. You can kind of guess it's going to kind of go. I think I made that angle a little too steep. This is just kind of our guess right now. We know it's going to do something kind of like this. Oops. A little too. It's not going to be a point, so you know it's going to curve. So I think it actually might be more like. I bet it goes down here a little bit. Kind of like that. And. We will have more information. This is a very, very rough sketch. The most important thing today is that end behavior, and on the pod, that's all I'm going to test you on. End behavior, I just want you to understand there is some stuff in the middle going on that we're going to talk more about in the next few sections. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Talk to you later. Bye.